Something all right, everybody say, all right, everybody's lunch. drop conversation because we're starting the show. All right, ready, set, and we're back. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Dirty and Driven Podcast. I'm your host, James Davini. We got an awesome show for you today, guys. I uh, hope you liked last week's episode. This one's going to be pretty similar to that. A little bit of uh, Nick and I BSing, a little bit of us uh, getting in some deeper stuff. And uh, we have a special guest, not going to introduce them quite yet, but we're getting there. Nick, what's up, man? <laughs> what's up? Hard dicks and airplanes. <laughs> <laughs> no, but on a real note. I was not note. expecting that. <laughs> on a real note. Nope. Uh, we're in the studio today. It's a normal Tuesday evening. Um, James cooked dinner for everybody but uh, the guests, so... Uh, sitting here real hungry james you want to broaden your horizon on that why you didn't cook dinner for us oh yeah dude i microwaved my pulled pork for just me Hmm. okay so you got a selfish host all right yeah (laughs) cut that out you bums are always eating my house i don't feel bad about it (laughs) yeah dude it's been it's been a pretty cool week for me man how about you this week's been i'm not gonna lie it's been pretty busy for me uh with with work and and just other stuff going on, man, it's just it's been crazy. And I've I've got Thursday and Friday off for a uh, little little leadership uh, group I've got. So I've been trying to rush through some things to get done beginning of this week, and then you know just had normal ranching problems and stuff. Always chasing cows every single day. So yeah, dude, you've been getting your steps in chasing those cows this week. Oh yeah, I'm getting well over twenty thousand steps a day. <laughs> Seems like I've had, I've had a couple short weeks. I went to St. Louis last week or two weeks ago, and then I went to started off this week going to a Motley Crue concert in Dallas. So, yeah, you've had a lot more fun than I have. I have. It's putting me behind at work, but I've, finally catching up. I've so. lost some hair this week. Nah, well, I lost some hair, but it's from banging my head. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. mine was from grinding on my desk. But you know what, man? Uh, whenever this show drops, it is going to be the beginning, the start, the kickoff. Of Labor Day weekend. So, to all you laborers out there, happy Labor Day weekend. Because this holiday is about the blue collar people. It is about those out there grinding and getting things done. And uh, this is is who it's for. It's who it celebrates. So, thank you to all of you laborers out there. And also, thanks to everybody who will be working Labor Day weekend. Because without you guys, we would not have a Labor Day weekend. So, thanks to our military, police, fire department, uh hospital workers nurses anybody under the sun grocery store clerks i mean everybody uh or those construction guys that have a tough deadline to meet we appreciate all of you because all of you are what keeps this thing going and uh, gives us all the freedoms to do what we love to do on labor day weekend so without further ado we got a hot take from a friend of ours of the show i won't say who but uh before we get to that everybody give a warm welcome to the lovely and beautiful fiance of mine, Victoria. Hello. She is on here. So, Victoria, we have a hot take from a friend of the show. And again, I'm not going to say who on air, but uh, he made a pretty controversial statement. Oh, okay. So, a little background about Victoria. She is an electrical engineer, uh, does electrical stuff, things that I don't understand. And the hot take that I heard was, in fact... That electrical work is just burger flipping with better pay. I would love for you to weigh in on that topic, Victoria. <laughs> I have a feeling I know who said that. <laughs> and I might be making eye contact. No, it wasn't Nick. Really? Yeah. Oh, you I'm You think actually... I could come up with something that clever? <laughs> yeah, no, dude, absolutely not. not. That funny. <laughs> no, that, that guy's not in the room. Okay, honestly, I'm very surprised because you always downplay my job. But it's fine. Um, hot take, that is so false. Because personally, and actually this is a fact, um, electrical people, electricians, you know, electrical engineers, uh, top tier of the society. Top you know? tier of the society, huh? Does yeah. that include electricians? Yeah, electricians are at the top of the craft. What you know? craft? All craft. Plumbers, the worst. Arts and crafts? I don't want to hear from you. I don't know. We can't uh, downplay the plumbers here. This yeah. is about electricians. Yeah, dude. I'm 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 all for plumbers. Yeah, well what is what is powering your house right now, pal? 
Well, probably coal. probably a water plant somewhere generating electricity. Uh, actually, it'd be the OG&E coal fire plant. Uh, it's half road. coal fire, half windmills. So. Well, but lately all I'm it's been man- it's been a lot more coal fire. Yeah. We've been hauling a lot of fly ash out of there. Well, all I'm saying is. You can't make the world turn without electricians, like really. So you're saying, well, so you're saying hot take is uh, not true. Uh, absolutely not true. Okay, so I do have this question for you. If you go to like a fast food, like a crappy fast food restaurant, I'm not talking Chick Fil A. I'm talking like a McDonald's or um, hey, don't you rag on McDonald's? A Whataburger uh, in a sketchy area, um, or something like that, or or most Whataburgers. I mean, no, no. No offense to the food of Whataburger, because we all know that that's, that's amazing stuff. But most Whataburgers are not very nice. You may go into like a bathroom stall on a Whataburger, and you see some very profane things on the stall, probably put there by the fry cook. Now, before the show started, you were telling us a story about a very similar instance you had with some electrical workers. I can't believe you're making a story. <laughs> Well, before the show, Victoria decided to show us a picture where these people made a sticker to put on a Herc rental <laughs> scissor plant. All right. So I, I just moved back to Oklahoma in March. Um, so I'm working at the refinery here in Ponca now. And I was walking through one of the substations as an electrical engineer does. And I walk in and there's some electric or electricians working. <laughs> They make eye contact with me. They kind of just blankly stare. Then I look to my left and I see the scissor lift. And then I see a giant (laughs) sticker of of 800 your penis. And then... (laughs) Is that Herc Reynolds' phone number? (laughs) I think so. And then also right next to it, a giant sticker with a hand crossed out. (laughs) <laughs> so t- <laughs> take that how you want it. So I look at this scissor. Sounds lift. like a plant. I want. <laughs> I just burst out laughing, and then I look back at the electricians, and they're just mortified that they that I saw this. But honestly, it really brightened my day a little bit. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, and this wasn't just like a a regular old picture. In fact, we might put it on Instagram. I think it's Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good reason to give you know, a like and a follow. Get yeah, out give there us a like and a follow sticker. on Instagram to see the picture, Victoria. I need you to send me or the video. I mean, this is like a legit sticker. Like, this isn't just like somebody very professionally done. Yeah, this was an <laughs> incredible <laughs> sticker. I think somebody spent <laughs> like some good money on that. Like, it, this is the kind of thing that you could very easily call that phone number because you think that's the real phone number because it looks that good on this machine. Did you call it? No, why would I call it? I don't need that. Call what? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good. No, I'm good. But it just it it makes me laugh because you know, in refining, it's a big deal to get stickers, especially on your hard hat. And they always try to make the most profane stickers to put on your hard hat, which leads me to say I just put the the dirty and driven hard hat sticker on my hard hat. And that is a great segue into our next segment, guys. We don't run ads on this show, but if you would like a free Dirty and Driven sticker, uh, no cost to you at all. All you got to do is a little bit of work. All you got to do is give us a like or a follow on Instagram or Facebook and uh, leave us a review on Apple or Spotify. Send us that screenshot with your address and we will mail you a sticker. I don't care where you live. I do not care. Anywhere in the world. Other maybe Canada. Just kidding. Even if you're from Canada, we'll send you a sticker. <laughs> we will hand deliver it. We will hand deliver it. Backtracking to my discussion of why electricians are top tier society. Um, Nick, how's your uh, electric fence doing? Okay, so we're gonna target. We're gonna target some guys here. That okay? <laughs> can, can you? So what, what? What she's trying to get out here is, you know, like I said earlier in the show, and in multiple shows before this, and probably every show from here on out, <laughs> there's a cow out somewhere with my name on it. That's just everybody knows that, and it's just kind of a blown over thing now. Like, hey, Nick, you got a cow? All right, I'll be there. Okay, thank you. So. 
with this incredible drought we've had here, just right in this little area, it seems like, it always rains right outside of my fence. But, um, you know, uh, Victoria, you could probably answer this a little bit better, but without a ground, it doesn't work very well prior to contrary belief. And that ground doesn't work because there's no moisture. So I'm not talking shit on electricians here. I'm just saying the circuit doesn't work because there's no water. Yeah, I'm just trying to prove a point that... And yes, farmers do need electricity, even out in the field. Thank so you. Thank so you. thanks you for making that now. work. Thanks for making, you know... You so know, anyways, what's everybody's guys. opinion? Nick, are electricians the same as burger flippers but with better pay, yes or no? <sighs> I'm going to have to give that a solid yes. Okay, Nick says yes. I'm going to say no. I have... Uh, wait, 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 who, who are we talking about here? Are we talking about, like, the top, top of the chain? We're talking like, just electrical workers in general. That, no, that well, was the hot take, electrical no, there, There's a few bad eggs out there, don't well, get me yeah, wrong. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's a couple guys, you know. <laughs> I can Nate think of Overall, you. we're just talking overall. We're, we're generalizing. <laughs> okay, well, I'll, I'll say, I'll say yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll stick to my answer. Okay, Nick says yeah. Electrical workers are just bur- burger flippers with better pay. Victoria, what's your take? Again, wrong. That's not even a I question. misunderstood the question there. I, so I, Victoria uh, is also the part-time manager of the local Whataburger. I have no words for you. <coughs> we don't even have a Whataburger. So, I'm sorry, guys. I think I misunderstood the question here. My answer would be no. Oh, <laughs> uh, so now you're back. <laughs> so you are no, no. Electrical it was, workers. It was, it, yeah, yes, I'm in support of electrical workers. It was worded in a way that I... <laughs> Okay, yes. Dude, good thing. Sorry, for all dude. you guys out there trying to look me up on Facebook to find my address, I, I take that back. It's a yeah. no. <laughs> yeah, Nick is scared yeah, Nick that said when that he gets home, power he has surge. no power. <laughs> so rude. Oh, no. I, I definitely have respect for electrical workers. That is one thing that I know absolutely zero nothing about, and I don't care to know anything about it, to be honest. So I am going to continue to outsource to my fellow electrical workers. That because reminds me of a funny story. Oh, please. <laughs> when I started as an electrical engineer down in Louisiana, Bell Chase, for all those people who know the great things about southern Louisiana, um, w- I started during a turnaround, which if anybody knows what a turnaround is, it's the worst thing on this planet because you just work and you don't, you're not a human at this point. But that's wh- how I started. I had never done any electrical work in my life. Apparently, I went to school for it, but that doesn't mean anything because college is a waste of time. And uh, you finally admit that. I'll admit <coughs> that any day. They didn't teach you how to wire a hot tub. It did <coughs> not. <laughs> <laughs> and that we'll get to that, that story. <laughs> Carry on, <laughs> Victoria. Literally, <laughs> so. Um, you know, they they give me a radio, and I'm supposed to be working with these electricians doing some PMs on stuff. <laughs> And I'm like, it's, I'm the only girl, obviously, which is pretty normal. So it's me and 17 electricians, um, all from southern Louisiana, big boys, nice guys. I'm on the radio. I'm like, uh, hello? <laughs> and they all just start talking at me. And if you ever have heard a Cajun person, they don't speak English. Like, it doesn't make any sense unless you know the dialect and so the for like three weeks they would just say things to me over the radio and i would just have no idea what was going on and so by the end of it they'd be like do you know are you deaf they didn't say it like that they said girls you deaf (laughs) (laughs) after who that i'd be like uh no and they're like why why do you never respond on the radio or or do what we ask you to do and i'm like I didn't realize you guys were asking me this whole time. So. There you go. All right, Victoria's deaf. Yeah, uh, I think it's also just when, uh, whenever men talk to you, you, you tone them out. What's that that is mean? a common definition known by women to be called selective hearing, <laughs> folks. From the two people who never listen to me. What? That's the worst. And thing. that leads us to... <laughs> Oh, yeah. You know, uh, my, my good friend Forrest, shout out to Forrest, he listens to the show. Uh, he once made a comment to a Cajun person of, 
Cajun people are just normal people, except they um, are part stupid. So. The way you just described that makes me think it was now Forrest that said. It, it certainly was not Forrest. I'm going to figure out who said this and give them a stern talking to and then shut off their electricity. Okay. They just put it back together. All right. Anyways, <laughs> so that was a good solid. I don't even know how long we've been running here. 10, 15 minutes of wasted time. So that was fun, guys. Today, I'm going to give you the quick what the health segment. Today's what the health segment is sleep. What is your quality of sleep like? What's it looking like? Do you prioritize your sleep? Because uh, most, I'd say most people, especially in America, don't. Like you go to Europe, these people sleep well. They sleep sleep in pretty well. They take like naps at lunchtime, all that. Here in America, uh, a lot of people run off of like four to six hours of sleep. And they're proud of that. And I used to be like this too up until probably last year. It'd be like, yeah, dude, I run off five hours of sleep at night. That's all I need. And it's like... I wasn't functioning well on that, and it led to a lot of things. It led to me getting sick a lot, led to injuries, uh, led to a lot of bad things. So I'm just here to say that nobody thinks you're hard because you don't sleep very much. In fact, it's probably quite the opposite. There's not a there's not a good ego thing. So a couple quick things to just touch on sleep wise uh, that can help you prioritize your sleep better. For one, uh, the number one thing that I've learned is get off your technology an hour before bed. I'm looking right at Victoria as I say this. I know that's tough to do, but man, just, you know, talk to somebody, read a book, you know, go on a a short little walk, something, just clear your mind, get it out of your head. Your phone causes you a lot of stress and it causes you to keep thinking, keep your mind up at night. So, uh, try to avoid screen time an hour before bed if you can. Uh, the next thing is avoid caffeine in the afternoon. I know I used to drink coffee up until I went to bed. And I would fall asleep just fine, but it actually messes up big time with like your REM cycles and your deep sleep cycles. And that's where your actual healing and rest comes from. It's those cycles. Uh, it, it, even though you're unconscious for a few hours, it doesn't mean that you're actually getting good quality sleep like you need. So just keep that in mind whenever uh, it comes to sleeping and, uh, just, yeah, prioritize it. So anyways, I'm James Devinney, and this was what the health. (laughs) <laughs> Nick, for reference, anytime I stay the night, he makes me put my phone away like a child. Yeah, I sleep with my phone in a di- <clears throat> different room. It's good, par- good parenting. Yeah. yeah, which ends up going terribly if your fiance's in the hospital and calls you 12 times, but you never answer. Yeah, well. Hell, he knew the consequences. I knew the consequences when I signed up. Yeah, so talk Nobody's about fault. prioritizing sleep. That was nope. a one-time deal out of about a thousand nights since I started doing that. So, and this has been what the health a side segment. <laughs> <laughs> That's the health. <laughs> Anyways, what we're talking about today, guys, uh, and, and Victoria is actually a good guest. Uh, we actually weren't planning on having her on here tonight, but she said, "I want to be on the show," so she's here. Uh, we're actually talking about uh, just discipline in general, the standard of excellence. Uh, is what I call that uh, as another word is, but yeah, just the standard of excellence. It's pretty much what, what I lump into the standard of excellence is discipline and integrity. It is knowing what to do and doing it. Even if no one's watching you, even if nobody's, uh, there, even if it doesn't necessarily benefit anybody that you see, it's just doing the right thing. This can be in, in your work life, in your personal life, anything. It can be as simple as, as putting your plate in the dishwasher after you're done eating or uh, as complex as maybe you're on a job site and you have a bunch of trash and you uh, throw it in a hole at the end of the day because you don't want to deal with your trash and get rid of it, so you just bury it. Uh, so we're going to kind of break down some of that. Uh, a lot of you out there, maybe you want a promotion, maybe you want to take the next step, maybe you just want to be a better person, a better human, but you don't have very good discipline and you don't live with a standard of excellence. I've personally encountered several people in my career that say that they want to be the leader and they want to be the boss and they want to be the foreman or superintendent or whatever. They have goals, but they don't live up to that standard. And they always say, well, once I'm promoted, I will start living like that, but that's not how that works. The standard of excellence is something you have to do in your everyday life, whether you're the lowest guy on the totem pole, 
or like I said, by yourself, or whether you're the top dog, it, it trickles down to every little aspect of what you do. And the best analogy I have ever heard on this is like, let's say you work at McDonald's. If you're cooking fries, you sit there and, you know, most guys, they don't care. They're getting paid minimum wage. Best freaking analogy I've heard is, is if you're the fry guy, you make the best freaking fries out there. You make the freshest tasting, the perfect ones, perfectly salty. You don't leave them under the warmer too long. You make the best fries and people will notice because that is such a small detail, but yet that impacts so many people. So that's kind of uh, just a fine example of what the standard of excellence is. Nick, you living in the standard of excellence? I try to as much as I can. I mean, obviously, we all fall short, myself included. But discipline's always been an important part of every aspect of my life. And I think it's, uh, I don't think I believe it's somebody that, or something that everyone should always try to follow, whether it's, I mean, for example, even with like a workout, even if you usually do like an hour-long workout a day and you don't have time because something comes up, like, even like 10 minutes of doing anything, physical activity or reading or whatever it is, um, I mean, just keep that keep that cycle in order and that discipline, and I, I think that's very important. So, yeah, I try, but, you know, I always fall short. Yeah, everybody falls short. You know, Victoria, the reason I bring her in here is, like, her house is always clean. She is very good It it her job. She really does a great job of keeping up with things. And she does a very good job of just like the littlest things that make a big impact, like cleaning up after herself and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Thanks. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, she's big on that. In fact, she's uh, ripped me a few times for not living up to that same standard. So it's a good way to uh, keep me accountable. Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> All I can think of in the back of my head was the standard of excellence, James. You need to live up to the cleaning. My house is clean right now. All I think, all I can think about is cleaning and accountability, and back to farmhouse. What I love about this is I can edit out. <laughs> Keep your yourself resting. accountable. <laughs> Keep yourself accountable. Clean that toilet, boy. Yeah, Nick was in a fraternity. Hey, that is my biggest thing, though. That is like my biggest pet peeve whenever it comes to the standard of excellence. Is guys that want to like talk about wanting to be successful and wanting to be big, but like. You go to the bathroom after them, and they they like peed all over the toilet seat and just left it. Like, dude, nothing pisses me off more than that. Like, if you cannot even clean the pee off your toilet seat, how do you expect yourself to be a leader of several people and be responsible for putting food on the table of a lot of people? Start small. It's just <laughs> little things. Yeah, it's a little things. Make your bed. Sweep the floor. I yeah. mean, come home to something you appreciate, don't yeah, these are it's just small little things, small adjustments that can affect your life in a big way. Yeah, yeah. It's not just cleaning. I mean, there's there's lots of examples, but right. I mean, one thing that has really helped me a lot is this little mantra I have, which especially around the house or at work is, I ask myself, is this going to take me less than a minute? And if the answer is yes, I'll just do it right then. Yeah. Because if it's less than a minute, it's like that's nothing. But if it's going to take me five minutes to do. I'll figure out when I'm going to do it. I'll plan for it. But if it takes you less than one minute to do, you might as well just do it now. It'll make you feel better later. Yeah, and I was really hoping you'd touch on that because that is such a fine example of exactly what we're talking about. Like, standard of excellence is such a, like, it's just small things. It is the details. And um, my boss slash mentor, one thing he really pounds into my head a lot is the devil is in the details. It is, if you worry about the details... The big picture will take care of itself. So if you worry about the littlest things, like Nick said, some practical actions you can take. Make your bed every day. Uh, take your boots off at the door. Clean your truck out. Get all the trash out. Get all the stuff. Uh, get your fast food wrappers out of there. Don't find, like whenever I would used to detail our, our fleet trucks, I'd find like three-month-old freaking hot dogs in the cup holder. And it's disgusting, like, clean that out at the end of the day like just small things like that keep your equipment clean keep your machines greased and oiled up and check your fluids every day like small little things clean them off at the end of the day to where there's not big clumps of dirt or asphalt or something crazy like that on there 
it's the standard of excellence that gets you noticed because people don't like it whenever you ignore these things and maybe your wife hates that you're a freaking slob and you don't make your bed and you don't clean up after yourself ever. She has to end up washing all your dishes because you're too lazy to do it. Or your boss is probably going to hate it if you're running a half a million dollar machine and you don't clean it off at the end of the day and it ends up causing a lot of issues. It's little things like that that don't take you much time and really that much effort that make a huge difference. And people notice that stuff a lot more than you think. Very so, true. Yeah. So if you if you want to level up and you want to be successful in your life, audit the little things in your life. Start, like I said, start with whenever you use the bathroom. It, if you pee on the toilet seat, wipe it off. Make your bed in the morning. Clean out the trash in your truck today. Like just the smallest little things make the world of difference and people will notice. So that's kind of my little spiel on the standard of excellence, guys. Nick, what you got anything to add? I mean, I... Uh, whatever you're doing, whatever you work in, what I mean, even if you don't work in anything, if you're self-employed, obviously you probably understand that more, taking care of your own stuff, but that applies to when you leave your house, to when you're at your job, to after work, to everything, and it's just, just you can you can just notice little things to, to try to improve every day on, like, like whenever I worked in farming, like, you you want to blow your machines off every day because you got chaff or grass. If you're mowing, you get grass and stuff all over. Like you just blow the machine off. Takes a couple minutes, and then it's just preventive and maintenance. Like James was talking about on machines, you just keep it clean. It might prevent some kind of expensive failure or something like that. So I mean, just take the time out of your day to to find something that's like, hey, I can I can do this to try to improve what what I'm doing right now and. And just go from there. Yeah. Victoria, you got anything to add? No, I think you guys all hit it on the head. Okay, cool. You looked very scared saying that. <laughs> was, yeah, pretty I smart. wasn't quite sure what pretty to say. smart guys, so. Yeah. Yeah, guys, so just uh, keep up that standard of excellence. Really, like I said, I'm, I'm going to say it one more time just to beat it in your heads. Just audit the little things in your life. It's oftentimes not big steps you have to take in order to see positive change. It starts with the smallest of things. If you change a few small things and you compound that over time, those small things become big things and those small steps become big steps and you will see a lot of positive change in your life if you just are disciplined in a few small areas of your life and get better every single day. This is a way to get better every day because every single day you're going to have that option to do the right thing or to blow it off. And you're not going to be perfect every day. And you know, it's okay not to be perfect every day because none of us are perfect every day. But if you're perfect most of the time, things are going to be a lot better in your life. But if you find yourself slipping, that's where the discipline comes back in. Because if you slip for too long, you're going to go right back to how you were. So be disciplined every day. And if you slip, tell yourself, you know what, man, that's all right. I slipped up today, but we're going to be right back at it tomorrow. That's how we got to do it. So, speaking of standard of excellence, I have a question. I want to know what y'all think about this. I'm, I'm roping this in because I'm going to assume. I'm, I think this has to do with standard of excellence. But I've seen a lot of construction companies lately, or just contract, contracting companies, have been emphasizing doing group stretching in the morning before they go out on the job. Like Hewitt does it. And I actually think that's really fun. It's a great way to get the day started. You get, you know, you're you're awake. You help prevent injuries. But uh, I think that's becoming like a new thing. Like the electricians at, at the refinery do that. The burger flippers. Shut your mouth. <laughs> so I, I just I want to know what you guys think about that. I mean, so I, I did that um, for two days. We worked on... We were building a road for the wind farm, and they made us all come and do that. Our whole crew had to go through their little safety orientation. We had to do their daily stretching. So I actually liked it. I thought it was good. That was probably the most uh, real exercise most of our crew has gotten since they were in high school. So uh, I don't hate it. That actually stems from Japanese companies. Most Japanese manufacturing companies, that's huge in Japan. Uh, they, They require their people to do it because it's kind of a team building thing, and it's a... Help really helps with their culture. So, 
Uh, I think it's cool. Not many people are doing it. It's not for everybody. I don't think every company should be out there doing that, but I think it is kind of a, a neat thing. And if it helps prevent somebody from, I don't know, blowing their knee out that day or cramping up, then I think it's worth it. Nick, what do you think about that, man? Uh, Well, I was just thinking about how I could implement that into my office, and I don't think there's a place for that. But (laughs) oh, I think it would be so fun because you you know if you sit all day, you got to prioritize. You know your knees, your your back. You know what, Nick? Tomorrow at one o'clock, when everybody's fresh off lunch at the bank, how about you just stand up and say, "Get on the intercom," just say, "Everybody at the front." You know what? It's time. (laughs) It's time for a new idea, guys. Everybody in the conference room, we're gonna go stretch. Like what? customers in here like nope <laughs> they can wait you guys heard of ergonomic hazards because OSHA 30 lines out pretty well the ergonomic hazards are a real thing and All we're right. gonna prevent them group one in the conference room These slouching we shoulders we're gonna fix those <laughs> anyways yeah so uh i don't know interesting i guess i i don't uh I'm not necessarily opposed to that idea. I think you look goofy doing it. I just think it's so fun. Like me and a bunch of 50-year-old men, we're just stretching, having a great time. I, like I just guarantee if you were out there stretching, and you, uh, first of all, you can't touch your toes, but I promise you the 50-year-old men wouldn't be looking at their toes. You could just, probably get everybody on board. Victoria's kind of got a wagon. <laughs> <laughs> Cut that out. Cut that out. I actually no, don't. I just I think it's a great way of team bonding. Like, when I was down in Louisiana, I would make the guys do all sorts of things with me. Like, they were just required. Like, I was... <laughs> Nick, don't wow. give me that look, man. <laughs> no, that's not what I meant. I'm sorry. I, mean, I know you got you can only hear me, but the looks I'm giving them is... <laughs> Go ahead. No, Go I ahead. would, like, call them over the radio and be like, hey, can you guys bring me a jacket? I'm, like, really cold out in the field. Um, and it would work. Or I would I would make breakfast or we'd all make lunch together. Like one day we're all working on a Sunday together because uh, we had some issues at the plant and uh, somebody brought steaks and we all grilled steaks together. And I, and I made sure that everybody ate their vegetables. Did you make them stretch? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I do agree. I think that it's great to do team bonding type stuff like that and. Uh, I think it's pretty cool uh, when people do that. That's actually something that, uh, much to Nick's dismay, we're going to start implementing at Dirty and Driven uh, once we get a little bit uh, going a little bit more and a little bit more consistent is we're going to start doing Team PT. Stretching. Well, it's going to be a, a lot more than stretching, but yeah, we're going to start doing some team, <laughs> team, team powerlifting and, <laughs> yeah, a and whole show lot you guys more than results. stretching, James. Yeah, yeah. Hey, weightlifting, running, it's going to be all inclusive. Boxing, we're going to do it all, man. Hmm. And as our team grows, we're going to keep it going. Also, on the uh, note of dudes getting Victoria jackets, um, <laughs> it was a hundred degrees today, and this chick's wearing an orange sweater. First off, it's a sweatshirt. Same thing. Second off, is this burnt orange? And I, I have decided that it's it's fall. Yeah, well, we just talked about the standard of excellence, and the standard of excellence would have been to put a short sleeve shirt on. Standard so, of excellence is to not recognize fall until after the first day of fall. Yeah. At I least let Labor Day be over. It's like wearing white. I don't care what any of you guys like, have please. to say. I'm not because I'm sure you guys are all nice and comfy, cozy in your offices. But unfortunately, my office is actually a meat locker. So I don't have a choice but to either freeze or adapt. And by adapt, I mean wear a freaking sweatshirt. I was, I, I was out in the elements and uh, it was 100 degrees. So I didn't want to wear a sweatshirt. Yeah. Um, I'm a desk lady now. So I don't really work a whole lot in the field anymore other than for projects. So uh, I've had to get used to the fact that I'm inside all day. Adjust the thermostat. I can't. It's not in my <laughs> office. A 55-year-old man, Doug, has the thermostat in his office. I closed every single vent. I had the maintenance guys close every vent in my office. And still, I, I'm free. I have a blanket. I've got jackets. I have an under-desk like heat lamp thing yeah victoria's the second woman i've seen today wearing a sweater slash sweatshirt and i was like what is with you guys and they're like what i I think i I think that's just an office thing i think every every lady at my office has a heater under their desk that's true 
it's worth it. That's anyway, all right, segment. enough of this. this well, all I'm yeah. saying. <laughs> all right, Nick. So let's get to the crapshoot segment, man. This is everybody. This is Nick's new segment that we started last show. If you made it to the very end of the last show, so Nick, what's on your mind? Okay, so like you said, this is the crapshoot. It's gonna be a random thing every time. Doesn't matter what it is. Uh, I think last week I had just kind of an inspirational little quote for you. Something a little quirky, a little funny. Um, This week, for all you guys that are kind of some time-traveling junkies or like Star Trek, Space Wars kind of (laughs) fans. Space Wars? (laughs) I I am not, but (laughs) this could uh, go with your views here says go out and chase your dream and just take a risk because if nobody comes from the future to stop you from doing it then is it really that bad of a decision i don't think so <laughs> anybody ever stopped you from the future doing something james i don't know we've taken some risks you know Can't not be too yet bad so yeah nobody's came anyways. from the future to stop me the very beginning of that Kind of sound like a fortune cookie. It's very inspirational. Oh, I was very. about to be very motivated there I, for a second. I, I, I motivated one person already. So. Yeah, dude, I felt motivated in the very beginning, and then and then I, I laughed because you made a great point. So the first half definitely came from fortune cookie, though. No, sir. <laughs> so add, add, uh, add in the bedroom at the end of that, because that's what you do with fortune cookies. So read that again, but add in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Go, <laughs> go out and chase your dream. Take a risk. If no one comes from the future to stop you from doing it in the bedroom, then how bad of a decision could it be? In the bedroom. In the bedroom. <laughs> Anyways, guys, that's crapshoot. So that's the crapshoot in the bedroom. <laughs> well, th- we put the dirty and dirty and driven this time. There you go, everybody. Yeah, I just realized that I think some of your family listens to this. Yeah. Some of my coworkers listen to this. I, I yeah. am <laughs> not a fan of your commentary. My family listens. Um, shout out to Logan Ross, who listens. Listened to every show so far. Logan is? Yeah. Oh, what's up, Logan? How's it going? So anyways, yeah. Hmm, that's weird. My, my loan assistant named Patricia Ross also listens to all this. No. Oh. Well, so shout out to the shout Rosses. Out, shout out to Ross the Rosses. Ross Flood. Ross yeah. Flood listens to this. <laughs> shout out to everybody with the first name Ross. <laughs> yeah, shout Ross out to name. anybody with okay. the first or last name of Ross. Uh, no, but seriously, guys, uh, we are growing a lot every single show. Uh, we've got, God, we've got a majority of the states listening. Um, we've got several different countries listening. I appreciate all you guys, really. From the bottom of my heart, I just got to say thank you. Uh, follow us again, Instagram, Dirty and Driven, Facebook, Dirty and Driven. Uh, we're pretty active on both of those. We're getting more active. Uh, we're going to continue to get more active as we grow and as we get better. Um, we just appreciate you guys. Um, leave us a review. Send us your address. We'll send you a sticker. If you don't have social media, uh, just shoot us an email, dirtyanddriven at gmail.com. Uh, thanks, guys. We appreciate you all, and uh, hope you guys have a great week, a great Labor Day, and... You tune back in next week. Hey, nobody asked for this, but I'm giving it to you now. My favorite gas station food. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Victoria, what's your favorite gas station food? So not every state is blessed with the amazing gas station of Casey's. And personally, my favorite gas station food is Casey's breakfast burritos. They're just delicious. Because they have hash browns in them. Sausage, egg, cheese, a hash brown, and then extra cheese. And it's just so good. It's very filling. And then they used to have really good uh, iced coffee, but they got rid of the iced coffee machine. So I don't buy coffee there anymore. What's your 40 time? My what? Your 40 time. How quickly you can do the 40-yard dash from wherever you are to the bathroom after you eat that burrito. I'm No, it's good quality. It's like real eggs. It's not, oh. you know, gas. what you would think of regular gas station burritos. Oh. No, this is a legit, like, they have a kitchen. It's like QT, All right. but better. Hmm. Well, you guys well, didn't ask for an ad for Casey's, but there it is. Yeah, we are in no way a sponsor <laughs> Casey's, but go out and have one in the morning. Go out and give we, that a try. We, Leave we, us a Casey's review. Casey's wants to sponsor me. We, I will we, do many We plug a lot of brands on this show that uh, we don't get paid for. So leave us anyways. a review. I've, I've never had one. Let's leave us a review. You know what, I'd Nick? like to try one. All right, Nick, here's your homework <laughs> for next week, man. I need you to, to go get one of those burritos and eat one and report back. 
Maybe even eat it on the air. Okay, I, I might just eat it. It can that be burrito talk mic. next week. You can just be. Yep. Crap shoot's going to be <laughs> breakfast for dinner. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> We've wasted enough of y'all's time today. <laughs> Appreciate y'all for listening. Thank you. Bye.